morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Amen, amen. Good morning to everybody this morning that's joining us, amen, on through via Zoom or live Facebook, amen. We are the pastors uh, Prophet James Banks, Prophet Yolanda Banks of the New Deliverance Bible Church, where we are rooted in Christ, we're growing in faith, we are affecting change through grace. Mm -hmm. Amen. This is a wonderful Sunday morning on the 24th of January. Yes. God has allowed us to make it thus far by faith. Amen. We glad to see you on this morning. Amen. We're going to get right to it. Amen. Uh, our scripture reading this morning is going to come from uh, one of the very familiar passages in the Bible, Psalms 100. Amen. Psalms 100. It is a Psalm of David. Amen. Psalms 100. Amen. Amen. Psalms 100. First one says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Verse 3, know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Verse 4, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Verse 5 says, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. Amen. That was the entire 100 numbers of Psalms, amen. This is a psalm, amen, of thanksgiving for all the land, all the world, all the nations. Doesn't matter where you reside in the world. This is for everyone that who have accepted the blood of Jesus Christ and been born again and believing that is one true God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Not the small G-O-D-S, but the one true God, the capital G-O-D. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. This psalm is, a, is, is, is simply titled, it is a psalm of thanksgiving. And amen. And it is the only psalm in this collection, amen, to bear its own title. And it speaks of the invitation of the whole world, the whole land, amen, to know and to worship God. Amen. He's invited us to worship him, amen, the one true God. He had made us to worship him, amen. Mm -hmm. And it is a jubilant 
uh, uh, with confidence for the whole earth, the whole world. Amen. It, it, it contemplates the glory of the earth when it, all the people have submitted to the Jehovah. Amen. Amen. And we, we submit to a lot of things, but we are not submitting to the one true God. Amen. We worship in uh, different idols. We worship different things. Amen. But we need to worship the true God, amen. And I, I said the word jubilant. That word jubilant is a synonym word for that word jubilant, which means feeling or expressing great happiness and triumph. Uh, it's overjoyed. It, it's, it's triumphant. It's joyful. It's jumping for joy, amen. It's rejoicing and it's exalting. It's, it's thrill, amen. Anytime that we uh, have an opportunity to talk about God, amen, to, in, to come to his presence, presence we should be thrilled we should be joy have joy about it amen and, and as a matter of fact uh, uh verses one through two it tells us what to do and what to do is to praise god and this is why we should be giving god some praise of thanksgiving because god has done so much for us that we can't even do ourselves i i used to hear the old saints used to say if i had ten thousand tongues i couldn't thank him enough amen and so if, if you woke up this morning uh, that's enough to give god some praise no matter what's going on around us but we are on top of the ground amen uh there was no limos black limos showed up to our our addresses we didn't have to sit and put on our black uh suits and our black dresses and amen and have to go to a funeral amen you ought to you know you ought to give god some praise amen amen, amen. i mean you ought to be excited this morning about the word of god amen and in verses one and two in in, in psalms 100 it tells us what to do to praise god it, it tells us make means that that word make is construct, means you have to construct a, a shout, a joyful shout unto the Lord, all ye land. And then it says, serve the Lord with gladness and make a joyful noise, a joyful shout to the Lord. And, and, and it says, uh, it's a declaration, amen, of praising God, amen. And this psalm did not give you God's sovereignty. It didn't give you the power and authority of God, but it gave you, amen, an exaltation of all the lands that why, what we should do is to praise God. And, and it told us what to do is to give him a joyful shout, amen. And then it said, all the lands, which means all over the word, the world. And it says, serve the Lord with gladness. And you know, a lot of times we don't want to do things. We, we complain, we grumble, amen. And, but we have to learn how to serve God with gladness. Sometimes I don't want to do certain things, but when I do, I serve the Lord with gladness. I'm glad to serve the God because if it had not been for him, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you this morning, amen. Yeah. It says, amen, serve the Lord with gladness. Said, Come before his presence with singing. Amen. Amen. Some, some of us might not sing in the in the right key or, 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 or trained to sing, but he says, sing. You have your own personal song to God. Amen. As, as many places in the Psalms, amen, it's, a, it's a praise it expressed in a song. But singing is not the only way that you can praise God, but it is the chief way to praise him. Amen. amen. And, and verse 3 says, it tells us why we should do it. It said, know that the Lord, he is God. It is he we, it is he who has made us. So he created us to worship and praise him. And not, we didn't make our own selves. And so we are his people and the sheep of his Pastor, know that the Lord, the praise comes from God, from his people, and all the land should be mindful that we should be praising him. Amen. We praise everything else, but we're not praising God. Amen. Yeah. And it says, and it says, it is he had made us the next reason to worship God. It's appropriate recognition that God had made us. And we couldn't, we couldn't form, we try to duplicate what God already done, but God had made us to truly give him the true worship and the praise. Amen. Amen. Because it was made, he made us. Amen. Amen. We are his people and the sheep 
of his pastor. Amen. Amen. In other words, if we are have been adopted into the family of God, we know that the Jewish people was the original amen chosen, but God has adopted us. Anybody that's non-Jew is called a Gentile. Amen. And so we should give him some praise. We should give him thanks. Amen. Amen. Verse four, say enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. When we enter into the gates, we should be already ready to go. We shouldn't come to, to in the presence of God. We need somebody to boost us up and then exalt us. We are should be already be thankful when we come into the courts and into the gates with praise. Amen. And be thankful unto him and bless his name, ready to bless his name. We don't need no prep rally if God has been truly good to you. Amen. And verse five, it says, why we should do it. God is good and he's merciful for the Lord is good. And that word good is transferred over to the New Testament, which is grace, the benefits that we don't deserve. Amen. Yeah. And so, so for, the, for the Lord is good, for his mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so God is, he don't lie. He's not the God of lies. Amen. And whatever he says, he will own up to. His credit is good. Amen. Amen. But he is good. He's everlasting. And not only just he on earth, but eternally. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so, and his truth endures to all generations. Amen. Oh, gracious God, our Father, right now, God, we love you today, God. We lift up your name today. We get, we coming with thanksgiving in our hearts right now, God. We coming, thank you for your grace and your mercy, God. But we want to stop and pause for a moment, God. Anything that we have done up until this point, God, have said, have done, have thought, uh, anything that we have did contribute to the opposite of what you want us to be in your name, uh, done in your name, God, we ask you to forgive us us right now get clean us up cleanse our minds our our, our our sight god and cleanse our hearts right now our souls right now god god create david said create me a new heart god god thank thank you for creating us a new heart god new mind new direction right now god thank you for the forgiving spirit that you have god no matter if we go the opposite and go away from you but you still forgive us you still give us grace you still give us mercy, God. God, we thank you, God, right yes. now, God, yes. for allowing us, God, to you pour out many blessings, God, even though we don't deserve it, even though, God, we don't even think about you sometimes, even though we just put you to a side, but you still there for us because you say you never leave us up or you're not forsaking us right now, God. God, we thank you right now, God, for this day, God. God, we ask you to come in this service right now and use Prophetess Banks, God, to speak to the nations, God, speak to the worlds, God. Speak to dying hearts, God. Speak to unsaved souls, God. God, speak to expansion of the ones that are saved. God, speak healing. Speak deliverance, God. Right now in the name of Jesus. Let this service go worldwide, God, to speak to the nation, speak, speak to the government, God, speak to the city, the house, the president, God, in the name of Jesus, God, let them know that we cannot do nothing without you, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, God, we speak healing through this message, God, we speak deliverance right now, God, we speak to hurting households, hurting people, God, we speak to people that are suffering from rejection right now, God, we speak to people that has downtrodden, God, God. Don't feel like they're worthy right now, God. We ask you to speak to the people right now, God, to say, what must I do to be saved, God? God, we thank you right now for Jesus right now yes, dwelling amongst us. God, we invite you in right now, God, into this service, God. Have your way, God, in the name of Jesus, name God. Jesus. We ask you to just move right now, God. Yes, God, move the atmosphere. Let the words go in the atmosphere. God, let the words touch Africa, God. Touch Egypt, God, in the name of Jesus, name God. Of Jesus. God, just let the word just spread, God, all over this universe 
us, God. Let you be happy, God, because we want to make you happy, God. God, change directions, God. Change mood swings, God. Change emotions, God, right now, God. God, we love you right now, God. We want to magnify your name right now, God, because it's only your name is sufficient right now, God. We give you the power, God. You have all the power, God. God, we, we actually release a, a special anointing today, God, as she speaks to the nation, God. God, let this word just go forward, God. Take the nerves away, God. Just speak, God, in a, with authority and power that you have placed on her tongue right now in the name of Jesus, God. God, we're going to be careful to give your name the praise and the honor, God. We magnify you, God. God, we act, we say, we decree and declare right now that this word is blessed, is blessed and highly favored right now, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And they all said, all together, amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to bring forth amen. Uh, the co-pastor of New Deliverance Bible Church, amen, no other than my beautiful wife, amen, prophetess Yolanda Banks. And we want to ask you to give her your undivided uh, attention amen. and go ahead and receive what God has placed in her today, amen, amen. amen. Praise God, and has prepared for his people this morning. Amen. And we also thank you for that powerful prayer. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we just bless God. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Amen. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So we're going to move forward. Amen. With what the Father is sharing with us on today. Amen. And we're going to be looking or reading, amen, from the epistle, amen, that Paul wrote to the church of uh, Colossae. Amen. Colossae, excuse me. Amen. And so we're going to turn, amen, um, in our Bibles. Praise God. And I hope um, that we as good students and good stewardess, amen, over the word of God, we have our swords, we have our Bibles with us, and we're going to be using our Bibles and turning, amen, to the book of Colossians. Amen. Amen. So let's turn to the book of Colossians and let's go to chapter two. Amen. The book of Colossians, amen, chapter two. Amen. 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 And our reference scripture for today is coming, um, starting at verse six and verse six reads, as ye have therefore received Christ, Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him, verse seven, rooted and built up in him and established in, fa in the faith, as ye have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving. Amen? Amen. Verse eight, it says, beware lest, excuse me, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Mm -hmm. Verse nine says, for in him dwell it all the fullness of the, of the Godhead bodily. Verse 10, and ye are uh, complete in him, which is the head of all principality and all power. Amen. 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 We should have shouted right there. Amen. Yes, because yes. Jesus himself, praise God, is the head of all principality. Amen. And the head of all power. Amen. amen. And if we are in Christ Jesus, amen, uh, if the world be uh, uh, against us, amen, God is definitely for us. Praise God. All right. Amen. Amen. And so um, we're looking at um, Colossians chapter two, verses six through 10. And um, when the Lord first established uh, this ministry, amen, the uh, New Deliverance Bible Church, amen, um, back in 2012, he, he revealed to us uh, the foundational scripture for our ministry, amen. amen. Um, he revealed to us his vision statement, his mission statement for this ministry, and also our church motto and the church purpose, amen. amen. And our foundational scripture, amen, 
or uh, the scripture for this ministry is actually built upon, amen, what was found in the text on today, which is verse seven, amen, which again says, rooted and built up in him established in the faith as she have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving amen. amen and so from this foundational scripture we get our model for the church amen which is what again baby we're rooted in, in christ, christ we're growing in faith and effecting change through grace, grace. Amen? amen so that is our church model amen which is built upon that specific scripture amen and so on today, we are going to be examining and we're going to be looking at just that. We're going to be looking at being rooted in Christ and we're going to be looking at having, amen, to grow in, in faith, amen. And we're going to understand what it means to effect change yes. through grace, amen. 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 And so I also want to emphasize or highlight, amen, um, excuse me, the emphasis that Paul made again back in verse eight when he says, to beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit at the after the tradition of men, yes. after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Amen. amen. In, in the Amplified Version, it reads this, it says, see to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deception, yes. also, uh, also called pseudo intellectual battle, right. and according to the tradition and musings of mere men following the what elementary principles of this world, rather than following the truth and the teachings, amen, of amen. Christ Jesus, amen. amen. So Paul here is warning them, amen. Now, Paul himself, amen, he did not directly, uh, directly found this church in uh, Colossae, amen, but rather it was uh, Epaphras, amen, a servant of Christ who founded the church, amen, with Paul's theology and after hearing Paul speak, amen, in Ephesus, amen, right. so this church was built after hearing, hearing Paul speak, amen, and so when Apostle Paul is talking to, amen, the church of Colossae, amen, he is doing so because Epaphras has turned to Paul, amen, and he has reached out to him for guidance and for assistance, amen, because in the church, amen, there were false teachers or a false teacher, amen, that had come among them, Amen. 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 And it had greatly hindered the success of the church. Amen. And so um, they at one time or another, amen, had they were strong in their faith. Yes. Amen. But now they were uh, very vulnerable. Amen. Due to the teachings of the of very deceptive philosophies. Amen. Of men that had infiltrated the church. Amen. And had deterred many from the faith. All so right. the meaning of philosophies of um, uh, excuse me, the, the philosophies of men are philosophies of human tradition and principles of the world that deny, amen, the all sufficiency of Christ and denies the preeminence of Christ himself. All right. Amen. Amen. So that's just to give you, amen, a uh, theological background about what we're reading, what we're looking into, amen. So Christ himself is the fullness of God, amen, and Christ himself is the preeminent and all sufficient sufficient savior, yes. amen. But the world would tell you that it is wiser than God. That's right. The world tells us that they are wiser than God, amen. And the universities that we have, amen, they teach our children, amen, that the Bible is religion or the Bible is a myth, amen, and that science is reality, amen. I know this to be true because when I was in college, amen, for my undergrad degree, amen, I had to take a course called World Religion, amen. Right. And in that class, they taught us that Jesus was a myth and he was not real or he was not truth amen and so we know this to be true you experience it for yourself yes. i experienced it for myself and these are what we call the philosophies of men about who god is and what god can and cannot do amen i mean it may sound logical they can present a logical argument about it right. it, it may sound enlightening to us amen it may sound even sound intellectual to us amen yes. but these are all philosophies that are not christ-centered 
praise God, and they are deceptive and they delude the doctrine, amen, that, that, that God has laid as the foundation for our Christian faith, amen? Amen. Amen. And so I want to ask you this morning, are you really rooted in Christ this morning? Are you really rooted in him, amen? Are you growing in faith All and right. are you affecting change, amen, through grace, amen? Are you affecting change in your home? Are you affecting change in the workplace? Are you affecting change in your church? Amen. Yes. Through the grace of God. Amen. 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 And the Bible tells us who hindered us, who or what has hindered you, excuse me, in your faith in Christ Jesus, that you do not obey the voice of the truth. Yes. And you'll find that in Galatians chapter five, verse seven. Amen. And so the doctrine of faith, amen, the doctrine of our faith in Christ Jesus, it is built on the eternal acknowledgement of the truth. Yes. And that is believing in God, who is the eternal father, amen, and, it, and believing in Christ Jesus, the son of God, and also believing, amen, in the Holy Ghost. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Um, the false teachers that were there at the church of uh, Colossae were teaching that you were not complete in Christ alone and that you needed to approach God, amen, through angelical beings, amen, okay. or through angels. So they were teaching the, the people in the church, amen, to uh, with false humility um, to worship angels and not worship God directly. All right. Amen. And and Paul here, amen, um, is writing an open letter to them, refuting the doctrine that they have been hearing, amen, and the theological errors of what they were about to embrace or attempting to embrace in yes. their hearts. Amen. 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 And so in order for us, amen, here today to have an abundant life and to have life more abundantly, we have to be rooted, amen, in who Christ really is. Yes. We have to depend on Christ, uh, his transformational power. Amen. And we cannot depend on ourselves. Yes. We cannot depend on self-help philosophies. Yes. We cannot depend on the traditions of men or human traditions and the philosophies of men because those philosophies are rooted in false humility and they are uh, they are towards God, I should say, vain and empty words. They yes. are de they're deceitful and empty words. Uh, towards God, or Amen. philosophies towards God, I should say. Amen. We have to be believers in Christ who are fully submitted to him. Amen. And that just means that we are fully submitted and we're fully planted in him and who he is and, and who God is and who God has uh, created and called him to be. We fully believe and we're fully persuaded, amen, and we are not moved, amen, by what the world is saying about him, All amen. Right. That means that we're not just hearers of the word, amen, but we're also doers of the word. We're going to follow through, amen, because we know that what God says in his word to be true, so our actions follow through on what the word of God tells us to do. All right. Amen. If we look at Jeremiah 17, uh, verses 7 through 8, it tells us that blessed is the man that trusts it in the Lord. Amen. And whose hope, amen, is in the Lord. Amen. amen. Verse 8 says, for it shall be as a tree that is planted. Amen. We have to be planted, amen, yes. in Christ Jesus. It says, for he shall be as a tree planted by the rivers of by, by the waters, amen, and that spread it out her roots, they go there rooted again, yeah. spread it out her roots by the river, by the water, by by Christ Jesus, because Christ is the living water, amen, amen. Christ is the living water, amen, that lives on the inside, inside of us, that yes. gives us thirst, I mean, gives us water when we are thirsty, praise God, amen, amen, it says, and shall not see when the heat cometh, 
Amen. It says, but her leaf shall be green. That means you're prospering. That means that you are growing. That means that you are alive and you are not dead. Amen. If Amen. it's green, that means that you are getting the oxygen that you need. You're getting the food and the nutrients that you need. Amen. To grow, to prosper, and to bear fruit. Amen. Amen. And it says, and, and you shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. There it is right All there. Right. I just spoke it before I even got to it. All right. So on this morning, I'm asking you, amen, are you fully trusting in the Lord? Amen. Did you wake up this morning full of hope in Christ Jesus? Amen. Or did you start your day pursuing your own thoughts in your own ways? Amen. Right. Did you start this, this day with thoughts that appease, amen, yourself or, did, or, or do your thoughts, amen, appease God? Amen. Do your thoughts line up and do they glorify God? Amen. Amen. We have to be rooted in Christ. And that means that you have to have strong roots. You have to have strong roots and they have to stretch. They have to stretch far. Amen. They have Amen. to stretch wide. Our roots Amen. have to stretch wide. Amen. Why? Because they have to be planted deeply in our faith. Amen. They have to be steadfast. They have to be unmovable in our relationship with Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. And after having accepted Christ, we should be thoroughly grounded in him. That's right. Amen. That's we right. have to be strong in our faith and our roots in Christ have to be fixed. That fixed means they have to be, it, it, we have to be stable. To be stable means that Christ dwells on the inside of us, amen, on the inside of our hearts through faith. And while I am rooted and while I am grounded in his wisdom, amen, I have to be also grounded in his love. Yes. One thing I can say um, about roots is that they will grow naturally in the dark. Roots grow naturally in the dark, amen, and they grow or they bend away from the light, amen, amen. and I'm, what, I'm, what I mean by that, amen, for us is that the, our roots, they need to be cultivated on good soil, amen, right. and then there are times when we are cultivated, amen, in the dark, we are cultivated, amen, in dark places, amen, so that our roots are anchored and so that our roots stretch out, amen, right. that just means that our dark places, amen, that our trials and our tribulations in life, amen, they come that we may be planted. They come that we might be strengthened in the Lord. They come that we might be established right. in our faith. All right. Amen. They they don't come that we give up, or they don't come that we pick up and move and we're planted somewhere else. God wants us, wants us to stay planted right where we are. Right. Amen. It says that our roots in Christ remain planted and the structure of the foundation that God has already uh, laid out for us. We're building upon that. We're building upon that, but we are also remaining in him. All Amen. Right. Amen. 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 So we, as Christians, we can no longer, amen, uh, be like children. We can no longer be like babes in Christ, amen, um, who are tossed to and fro and who are carried about by every wind of doctrine, amen. Uh, There's so many of us, we pick, I mean, we hear it today and we lose it today. You yeah. know, we yes. hear, we receive Christ today. And at the end of the day, we don't know if we want to be saved anymore. I don't, yes. you know, I don't understand that, but that, that, that is what we see, you know, but it says we have to be rooted and we have to be built up in him to be built up in Christ. It means to develop upon the structure or foundation that has already been laid for us. Jesus has laid that foundation for us at Calvary's cross. Amen. That's right. He laid the foundation for us at Calvary's cross and our fellowship and our relationship with him. It causes us to be, to conform. Amen. It causes us to conform to the word. It causes us to have the mind of Christ. Amen. And it causes us to increase in our knowledge in him. Amen. 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 So the rule of Christian living, amen, is that we are to walk in Christ, amen? Amen. Not to walk in the world when we feel like it and to put on the world when we feel like it, amen? 
and then turn around and put on Christ when we feel like it. We're not supposed to be living our lives like yes. that. Amen. Walking in Christ is not picking up, amen, the Holy Bible, uh, which is holy and unadulterated. Amen. Uh, word of God. And, and in the same breath, amen, we speak profane and filthy languages out of our mouths. Amen. Yes. Um, yes, we know that God is still working on us. And yes, you know, we, we they have the saying to try me. I mean, I'm sorry, so try Jesus, not me. Well, we understand that you are uh, yet growing in Christ, amen. But the world is teaching our children that it is okay, amen, to bless God, amen, with the fruit of our lips, amen, and in the same breath, curse men, yes. amen, with the same lips at That's the same right. time. Amen. This is a philosophy of men and it is profane and it is unholy. Amen. And it does not build upon the foundation and the nature of who God is. Yes, yes. This is what we call conforming, amen, um, not conforming, amen, to the righteousness of God. But instead, we're conforming, amen, to our own righteousness because the philosophies of men have persuaded us not to acknowledge and obey the truth that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're living in a time uh, today where the spirit of delusion yeah, the spirit of delusion speaks as the truth for the people. Yes. Amen. And the spirit of God's truth is framed as a lie. Yes. Yes. Isaiah 5, uh, 20 and 21 says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil that put darkness for light and light for darkness. Amen. Mm -hmm. It says that put bitter for sweet and the sweet for bitter. Yes. Amen. Yes. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes. Mm -hmm. And then that, that is our issue that we have as a nation. We have become wise in our own eyes. We have become prudent in our own thoughts and in our own sights. Amen. We have become, amen, the authority of our own lives and we do not respect any other authority. That's right. The That's reason right. why the world is in the chaos that it is in today, because they, they don't respect the authority of men. Mm -hmm. They don't respect the authority of those in government. And they definitely don't uh, uh, respect the authority of God. All right. And because we are out of, amen, and not following the authority of God and following our own authority, everything is thrown off. Yes. Because everybody's living according to what they want to do. Yes. Amen. Yes. And so as builders, amen, the Bible tells us that we are lively stones, which means we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and, and, and we are internally equipped, praise God, to build spiritual houses and live holy and obey the truth of God that is acceptable in his sight. So that means that we are capable, amen, of living holy. You yeah. know, we are capable of getting right with God. It's our flesh that that chooses not to all right because we refuse to die daily amen to the word of god we refuse to love our neighbor as we love ourselves we refuse to forgive those uh who have done amen things against us we refuse to walk in kindness we refuse to to walk in love, amen, and it's, we're talking about the agape love, we refuse to walk, amen, in the fruit of God's spirit, amen, because we want to walk in our own spirit, we want to walk in the things that, that appease our flesh, yes, yes, and we think that it is okay, amen, amen, but it's only okay in our, through our own eyes, and our own sight, the way we see it, yes, Praise God. Amen. And so we are to be rooted in Christ, built up in him. Yes, Amen. Yes, yes. Amen. Rooted in Christ and built up in him. Amen. Amen. So then it tells us that um, 
rooted in, so we've discussed being rooted in Christ. We, we've discussed being built up in him, him being Christ Jesus. And we also have to be established, which means to be established in the faith. Amen. Amen. And we know that faith is the substance of things hoped for. We know that it's the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Amen. In the Greek, that word faith, amen, means having a conviction of the truth of anything. All right. So what truth are you following? And does your faith convict you, convict you, amen, of the truth? All right. Hebrews 11 and 6, it says, but, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And the reason the reason for that is because the the faith, the truth is coming from God mm -hmm. and not from man. Right. The faith that we are to have hope in, the substance that we are to have hope in is the truth that comes from God and not from ourselves. Amen. Amen. So being established in faith or growing in faith in, on one hand is the ability to bear much fruit. Amen. While simultaneously in the other hand, growing up to be a habitation for God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Through the spirit. To be established means to make firm. And we said that by, about being rooted. So here again, being established means we are making firm. Uh, we are confirming as well, which means to prove that God's truth, to prove God's truth and his divinity. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us in Mark 16 and 20, amen, that they went forth and preached everywhere, amen, the Lord working in them and confirming the word with signs followed. Yes. So how do you know, amen, that the word of God is true? You will see confirmation with signs followed after the word. You will see the fruit of it after the word amen yes. and that's after being planted after you plant something in the ground you know that it is good amen when it when it starts taking root and it grows up and it begins to bear fruit all right and it's the same with us. You will know we are confirming the word of God in us when we begin to bear fruit, when we be, begin to grow, when we begin to increase, when we begin to develop in the things of God. Amen. When uh, when uh, our neighbors can do us wrong, but we don't lash out at them or a, a good example would be, you know, road rage when someone cuts you off and you're not cussing them out anymore. You know, you're praying for them and you're blessing them instead of, you know, speaking curses against yes. them, amen? amen, things of that nature, amen, the fruit in us, amen, will bear testimony of the word of God, All right. amen, and so um, to be established in means to cause increase, it means to expand by a concerted effort, amen, All right. and it causes us to prosper, to advance in the things of God, amen. Yeah. Amen. And we are almost uh, we are almost done here. Amen. But we're again talking about being rooted in faith. I'm, I'm sorry, being rooted in Christ, being established in faith and effecting change through grace. Amen. Amen. So let's look at that. Let's look at uh, effecting change through grace. All right. Amen. Effecting change through grace, amen, is God's way of effecting change for us through Jesus Christ himself. Amen. Because amen. he is capable of effecting change in us and the world because of God's power. So not only are we uh, examples of God's uh, power flowing through us, but uh, it, it is proof again, amen, that God's presence is real when God, when they say God is not, amen, when God does miracle signs and wonders, amen, yeah. he is manifesting, uh, manifesting himself in us and through us and for us, amen, for the unbelieving to see, amen, that his power and his presence is real yes. here in the earth. He is still alive. He is not dead dead amen and he will be coming back soon amen yes 
Amen. And so um, it is by the grace of Jesus poured out into us, amen, that helps us to bring about a change in us, amen. amen. Um, there are times when when uh, change or when growth, amen, can be very painful yes. for us, amen, um, because it requires that we walk in truth and not in delusion or error, amen. Yes. I, I don't understand how so many people embrace a lie and they believe in their own lies as if it is the truth. Yes. We won't say no names, but yes. I, it, it, it just baffles me that you can accept the lie for the truth and be okay with it. You know, that would set off a red flag for me, like what is truly wrong um, or, or or maybe what has hindered or hurt you in your past, amen, that caused you, amen, to believe lives over the truth. I mean, that is a dangerous territory to walk in, and um, that is something that we truly have to submit to God in prayer, amen. amen. Um, growing and changing, it also requires that we remove um, any personal ideologies that we have, any systems of ideas that we have conformed to, amen, so that we can conform to the truth of God word amen and that may be a part of the reason why we accept the spirit of delusion mm -hmm. because we have not conformed amen to the truth of god's word we have confirmed uh conformed to our own word amen it, and sometimes it's things that uh it might not be uh something that we've told ourselves it may be something that as we grew up someone told us right. and we have always believed that to be true and grew up believing that to be truth for us until we are taught in the word of God that our belief is in error. Yes. And it has happened. There mm -hmm. are things that I grew up and I thought uh, I was taught as the truth. Amen. And, and when you come into the knowledge of the truth through God's word, it makes you put away those things and yes. not do those things anymore because now you understand, okay, I've, I've been doing this all these years and I've been in error. Yes. There are sometimes we, we walk in things and not knowing, amen, that we are sinning against God because these are things that were taught to us until we come and we get deeper and we grow deeper into the word and, and into the knowledge of God's truth. Amen. Yes. Can you attest to that too, yes. uh, Prophet Banks? Yes. Amen. And that's true. Amen. And so uh, growing and uh, changing, it also requires that we get healed and that we get delivered, amen, from past spiritual wounds and scars that we have amen sometimes we have our own ideology about how we are to heal from something and how we are to get over something or someone or, or a past hurt amen yeah. and sometimes our own ideologies causes us to re uh, wound or, or or tear open the old wounds and so yes. they never get the proper healing that they need yes. because we have not submitted that thing to god amen, right. amen. they re-injuring an old wound does nothing because that nothing but cause it not to close and cause the scar not to heal yes and so every time we deal with that thing it's still fresh because it has never properly closed yes so you know when it's when when we're talking about effecting change through grace amen we have to submit ourselves amen uh to the word of god and to christ amen for true healing and true deliverance so that our past hurts our past wounds that we have dealt with amen and the past scars that we have that they truly be healed and they close so that we do not affect someone else mm -hmm. and that it does not hinder us from moving forward yes, amen amen um, growing or effecting change through grace, I mean, it requires the removing of spiritual bondages and spiritual tethers that are binding us, amen. And again, that goes along with healing and deliverance as well. I mean, those are can be things that uh, we hold on to, amen, that have kept us bound. Yes. It can be, um, I want to say, uh, psychological, philosophical, uh, however you want. It can be physical, you know. Those are things that keep us spiritually bonded, amen, uh, uh, from going further, amen, or moving further in growth or in the things of God, amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes. It requires that we grow and walk in spiritual maturity, which requires, amen, that we do things that we might not want to do. 
Yes. Do things that God is requiring of us. Yes. We, 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 we sing the song that there is more that I require of you. Mm -hmm. We, we cry out to God yes and and we know that God is, is is asking us for more he's not talking about ministry he's not talking about you know doing things outside he's talking about the work that needs to be done on the inside of us yes there is more that God is requiring of us when he sees you does he see his image? When he sees you, do you have the mind of Christ? Are there areas in your mind? Are there areas in your spirit, man, that needs to be worked on? That is the more that God is requiring of us. And sometimes we never get that growth. Sometimes we never experience that change because we are refusing to grow. Yes. We're refusing to be stretched. Amen. Yes. Amen. And so we have to learn to walk in spiritual maturity because that is something that God requires of us to do. I.e., example, walking in forgiveness. Amen. And getting unstuck out of our comfort zones. Um, and, you know, that's that's something else. God can be asking us to move and go into a different direction. And we don't want to move because yes. we're stuck in our comfort zone. That's right. We don't want to move forward because we have our own uh, perception about the way God wants to do things. We don't think it's beneficial for us. But I, I can tell you that if God said it, I mean, he's setting you up, amen, to be blessed. Amen. It is a setup to be blessed. Amen. Um, effect and change through grace. Amen. It also requires, amen, again, that you have the mind of Christ and that you become a reflection of his image. Uh, this refers back to Romans chapter 12, verse 2, where it says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. amen. That you may prove that which is good and acceptable and per the perfect will of God. Amen. amen. So to change, it means growth. And sometimes that growth for us can be painful. Um, and the reason why it is painful, the reason why we don't like it is because that is what God calls dying daily to the flesh. Yes. Yes. But we have to rejoice when we die daily. We have to take joy in us becoming a reflection of the image of Christ. Amen. 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 And so um, you can't grow in God's grace, amen, if you don't want to be stretched. Amen. If you don't want God to use you, you know, a lot of times we pray, God, use me, um, do this with me, do that with me. But when God begins to work, do a, a good work in us, yes. when he begins to do transformational things in us and puts, puts us in positions where we can be used, where we can grow and move forward, amen, we begin to resist the thing that we pray for. Right. Because we feel uncomfortable or because we don't like uh, the changes that God is trying to make. We want to stay stuck and we want to stay in our own mindsets. Amen. It's almost like wrestling with God when Jacob mm -hmm. was wrestling with God. We begin to wrestle with God. Yes. Our flesh begins to wrestle with God. Yes. Because we don't want to let go of what we want to do. Mm hmm Amen. Amen. First Corinthians three and thir uh, 10. First Corinthians three, verse 10, it says, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. We have to be wise master builders. Amen. It says that I have laid the foundation and another build it thereon. It says, but let every man take heed to how he build it thereon. Mm -hmm. So you are the master builder of your spiritual house. Yes. And you are working alongside Christ Jesus or behind Christ Jesus because he's leading. Amen. And you, he is giving you the tools. Yes. Which we find in the word of God on how to build upon this spiritual house. And like they say, mostly in the churches is yours to accept or reject. Amen. That's right. Is yours to accept with the instructions, the blueprint that God is giving us, amen, to build our spiritual houses and to get our houses in order. Yes. We are not going to live forever. 
That's right. We have to stand before God one day. Yes. And will you stand before him? Amen. Knowing that you have denied him yes. and refuse, amen, to accept him fully and wholeheartedly. Being rooted in him. Amen. amen. Knowing that you uh that you try to grow in Christ. Yes. And when I say try, I don't mean just, oh, okay. No, I mean fully, like actively, you you try your life to grow in the things of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And the last uh scripture, amen, is Ephesians 2 and 8. Praise God. Amen. It says, For by grace we are saved through faith. And that and that not of yourselves, for it is a gift gift of God. Excuse me, y'all. Yes. Amen. Um, going back to verse seven, which was our key verse and our, our scripture text, we talked about being rooted and being built up in him. We talked about being established in faith. And it says, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Amen. amen. And that abounding therein with thanksgiving. Amen. It means to have no limitations. Amen. Uh, to, to, to set no limitations on the operations of God. Amen. amen. For your soul. Amen. amen. It means uh, the growth of the soul. It, it means to have growth of the soul in the knowledge, in the love, and in the image of God. Amen. amen. Those who are brought into uh, such a state of salvation with Him, Amen. They they know how to do so with gratitude, and they know how to do so in love through obedience. Amen. amen. And so you begin to grow in grace. You begin to effect change. Uh, through gra grace in your life because you are submitting yourself to obeying the truth of Christ Jesus. And not only that, you're also being a witness for somebody else amen. on how to do it, on how to live it, on how to, to get through, amen, on how to ha have a relationship with God that is effective and that pleases God. Amen. amen. And so... Um, uh, I'm going to close, amen, with this, amen. The Bible tells us whose report do you believe, amen? And do you believe the report of the Lord? Do you believe the report is the word? Do you believe what God is saying, amen, is true for your life, amen? Amen. Is your election, amen, in Christ sure? Amen. Our motivation in Christ, our motivation to be rooted in Christ, it should not be, amen, uh, an on and off switch. Yes. We shouldn't be able to turn it on and turn it off. That's right. uh, we should be rooted, amen, in the joy of Christ. We should be rooted in the love of Christ. Amen. We should be rooted in him because we have a, a, a dying love, a passion a fervent passion, amen, to be, amen, with God. Amen. We should be rooted, amen, in, in his identity. That's right. Do you have a passion today to be rooted in the identity of Christ? Or do you have a passion for being rooted in something that is temporal? Yes which is the world's way of thinking, the world's way of doing things. Amen? Amen. Amen. His identity, God's identity, should be the identity that we are conform conforming to. Amen? Amen. Amen. And that, that is what the Lord is giving me. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. What a powerful word. Amen. On today. And I, I don't know about you, but I was truly blessed. I got a lot of um, a lot of nuggets out of there. I have a lot of talking points from that lesson. Amen. Rooted in Christ. Amen. Growing in faith, effective change through grace. Amen. Uh, the question is, she asked you, uh, what, whose report do you believe? Where are you rooted? Who you are rooted to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What report are you rooted in? Yeah. Are you rooted in the world? Or are you rooted in Jesus Christ? And uh, most of us, 
Nowadays, we're not rooted in Christ, but we're rooted in the things that cause us to separate us and divide us from Christ. We, 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 we are rooted into things that causes us separation. We cause us, uh, you talk about the ideologies, uh, these philosophies of men. We are believing, it's not like, and I'm gonna say this, and, and I don't care who gets mad about it because I, I, I am who I am and who God called me to be. And you know, when you having a conversation with someone where they rooted to, yeah. when, when I'm talking to people outside of the four walls, because I talk to a lot of people, witness to a lot of people, ministry is not just in the four walls. I minister people on a daily basis and talking to people. I can tell when someone been in jail. I can see where the ideologies has been. I see where their myths, uh, where they, uh, how they twist the word around. I can tell where they are coming from in the in the first couple of words for a few uh, minutes of the conversation. But I always bring them back to Christ, and it's up to, like you said, it's up to you to receive or to reject. When I was growing up in the Baptist church, and when they would put the chairs out there, and when if nobody came down, the preacher always would say, it's yours to receive. I was to extend. Yours to receive or to reject. It's our job as ministers of, of the word is to make sure that you are rooted in Christ and growing in faith and effecting change through grace. But if you don't receive it or you reject it, it's on you. We all are responsible for giving it to you. And that's why I pray. That's why I thank God for our ministry or healing and deliverance ministry. Amen. We're not just teaching and preaching the word, but there's healing that's coming through these messages. Amen. Amen. And at this time, amen, uh, we want to offer Christ to those who want to accept Christ. If It doesn't matter where you've been or where you're coming from. It's, it's all about being rooted in Christ. It's all about your salvation. It's all about where you're going to spend your eternal life. See, you know, a lot of times we're concerned about what we're going to say, what we're going to eat, what we're going to do, what we're going to do in five years, how much money, your 20 years, how much money we're going to have in the bank. But we have to be rooted in Christ to know that we are we are only here temporarily. We only here gonna be on we on borrowed time. There are people are leaving, I mean, well-known people, people in our families are leaving, young, old, middle age. Where are you going to my question today? I'm appealing today, is where are you gonna spend eternity? Amen. Amen. Um, uh, we're going to do a teaching soon and teach you about heaven and hell. Amen. I don't want to get into it because that's a theological uh, lesson. Amen. But uh, where do you want to spend? You want to spend your eternity burning up or you want to spend it with God? Amen. So today, amen, we want to appeal to you uh, uh, as we go forward. Amen. We want to appeal to you if you want to be saved. Amen. If, that, you know, if you repeat after me, amen, this sinner's prayer, Lord, I thank you for this day. God, I ask you for forgiveness right now for every sin that I have committed up until this point. God, I believe that Jesus died and he was raised from the grave for the remissions of my sins. I believe that the blood that you shed for was for my sins. God, I thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you repeated that prayer, you are considered as being saved. And it was a short prayer. But it doesn't take many words, amen, to be saved. And now that's part of it. The next thing is to work on getting the word, getting healed from those things that cause you to be in separation, not in the right relationship with God. Those are the things you need to get into, rooted into a Bible-based teaching, church healing and deliverance ministry, amen. And it's more, you just 
can't just come to church and just sit there. You can't just log on and just sit there, but you actually got to put some work into it. You got to be, if you're talking about effecting change, you got to grow in faith. And your faith is measured. Some of our faith is like this, some like this, some like this. But my wife and I have crazy faith. We believe crazy stuff. But hearing, about hearing. Yes. Hear the word of God. You have to grow in the word of God. Amen. You have to constantly uh, be taught it, uh, whether you are uh, reading the word at home or, or whether you are coming, you know, to a Bible-based church that is teaching the word of God. You have to constantly hear it so that you may grow in your faith. Amen. Amen. And the sinner's prayer that we was referring to, they came from, it was Romans 10, 9, and 10. And this is biblical proof, amen, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, that's what you did, you confess your sin, uh, with uh, the mouth Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, and thou shalt be saved. In other words, saved from damnation. And, you know, a lot of people don't want to hear about you going to hell these days. But I, we, are, we are going to continue to continue to work on, amen, and extending out, amen, people being saved. Mm -hmm. And the next extension today, if you want to be a part of this ministry, amen, you reach out to us, amen, 346-298-0390. Uh, uh, Once again, it is three, area code 346 298 0393. Or you can reach us by info uh, at newdeliverance.org or www.newdeliverance.org. Amen. <laughs> and our website, you know, if you want to reach out, if you want to be a part of this ministry. And lastly, if the word blessed you and if you uh, God led you to uh, sow a seed into this ministry, and you sown it on good ground. Amen. It's dollar sign, New D, 2012. Dollar sign, New D, 2012. Amen. And amen. We're going to uh, bring it to a close. We're going to ask Prophets Banks to pray us out. And may God bless you. May God keep you. We see you hopefully on Wednesday night at 730 prompt. Amen. We always go on about uh five minutes prior mm -hmm. so they give you enough time to get on so you you should get a note if you're uh in the group you will get a notification but if not you know share it please and may god bless you may god keep you until uh on wednesday at 7 30 amen, amen. Again, thank y'all for tuning in thank y'all uh, for being on sunday morning worship service Father, we pray, amen, that the word that was spoken on today was sown on good ground, Father God, unhindered and unchecked by any demonic force or attack of the enemy, Father God. We thank that, Lord, their eyes be enlightened, Father God, their ears be open and receptive to receive, Father God, what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, Father God, yes, to the God. church, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that we are rooted in you, Father. We are yes, rooted God. in Christ, Father God. We thank you and bless you, Father God, that we are growing in faith, that you're leading yes, and guiding God. us by your Spirit, by your Holy Spirit, Father God, to grow in the things of God, God yes, to God. understand the things of God, to know, Lord God, when we see, Father God, error, Lord God, and know, Father God, when it is truth, Father God, so Yes, we God. growing in you and in your truth, Father. Yes, God. We bless you and thank you for those that tuned in today, Father God. We pray, Father God, that you would, Lord, bless their lives, bless their household, Lord God. Yes, bless God. their families, bless their finances, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for blessing their futures, Father God. Yes, we God. thank you, Father God, for all that you're doing, Father God, and we will be careful to give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all of the praise, Father God. In Jesus' name, we bless you. And they all say, Amen. 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 We thank you again for tuning in. And until next time, we love you and be blessed. Amen. Amen.